For many of us, the holidays are a joyous time to look forward to. Christmas shopping, meal planning, traveling, gift giving, friends, family, hot cocoa, pajamas, movie nights, and of course, Mariah Carey's music haunting us everywhere we go. But for many people, the holidays are a difficult time emotionally, and people can often feel stressed out, drained, and even depressed during this time of the year. My name is Ramsey Dean, and I am a clinical social worker. And in this video, I am going to outline the reasons why you might be experiencing the holiday blues. And I will give you five tips for how to cope so you can navigate this holiday season with as much confidence as possible. There are many reasons why some of us experience the holiday blues. While the holidays can be a fun time for celebration, it also tends to be a time of increased stress. A survey by the American Psychological Association found that almost 40% of people report increased stress during the holidays. This can be due to increased financial pressures, uh, family stress, and more social obligations that result in less time for personal relaxation. We also tend to have very high expectations of what we think the holiday should look like. This is often caused by the exaggerated portrayal of the holidays in television and film, but also on social media. I often share with my clients something known as the happiness equation, which is that happiness equals reality minus expectations. If we expect that our life and circumstances around the holidays are going to look like a Hallmark movie, then we are going to be less happy when things don't meet that expectation level. Sometimes we don't even consciously realize that we have unrealistic expectations. These can live deep in our subconscious and often be rooted in our personal histories, like the way we were raised, for example. Another reason you might be feeling the holiday blues is due to feeling a heavy burden from perceived obligations. This can be related to things like feeling pressure to travel or host people at your home and cook, feeling like you need to spend money you don't have on expensive gifts, uh, things like that. Now, you couple this uh, type of pressure with the fact that while most of us love our families dearly, there are some of us who find our family dynamics to be stressful or even harmful to our well-being, and you have a recipe for feeling down and overwhelmed during the holidays. There are also some environmental factors related to the change of seasons as we move into fall and winter that could be causing your holiday blues. As the weather gets colder, many of us spend more time cooped up indoors and we spend less time exercising and getting exposure to sunlight. There's even a small subset of the population that suffer from a condition that's known as seasonal affective disorder or SAD, which is basically a type of clinical depression that tends to occur in the fall and winter. Seasonal affective disorder tends to be more common in northern climates, like where I live in the great state of New Hampshire, and it's believed this is due to limited exposure to natural light, which can impact our circadian rhythms and neurochemical balance. I also think there's just something about the holidays I can't quite put my finger on that can push us to ponder these kind of existential questions that are not always helpful. Things like, what's the meaning of life? And what's my purpose in the world? Should I have fought harder for that relationship or marriage that ended? Should I have had more kids? Should I have gone back to school or made a career change? Am I gonna die alone? You know, the types of things that we rarely talk about, but that keep us up at night. And while it can be helpful to spend time clarifying our values and auditing our life and our time to see how we can live more in accordance with the things that are important to us and our personal values, it is not helpful when we do this in the context of dread and hopelessness and guilt. And for many people, the holidays also can be a trigger for grief, especially if this is the first holiday season you are navigating without a loved one in your life anymore. People associate the holidays with family, and if you've lost a loved one, the holidays can be a constant unpleasant reminder that you no longer have that person in your life. All right, let's get into my five tips that will help you navigate the holiday blues with more confidence. Number one, my first tip is you must acknowledge your feelings. If this is your first holiday without a loved one who's 
has passed away, or there are other extenuating circumstances as to why you can't be around family or friends during the holidays, such as you can't afford to travel or you're not close to them or whatever it is, it's going to be normal to feel grief and sadness. It's very easy to think that you should be happy because it's the holidays, but the reality is you can't force yourself to be happy just because of the time of year. If there are stressful or painful things going on in your life, it is okay to take the time you need to allow yourself to feel your emotions. Cry if you need to, and have a little acceptance for the fact that you're human, and human emotions don't care about the time of the year. Sometimes we need to allow ourselves to feel intense emotions as they can help to cauterize our wounds and assist in the healing process. If you find yourself avoiding unpleasant holiday emotions, or if you catch yourself thinking things like, I should be happy right now, I want you to just pause and take a moment and just acknowledge whatever emotion you're feeling and allow yourself to feel it and hopefully it will pass, as opposed to stuffing it away or being overly hard or critical on yourself for feeling the emotion in the first place. My second tip is to remove expectations. Remember earlier when I referenced the happiness equation, which is that happiness equals reality minus expectations? Well, I actually learned about this concept from a YouTuber named Ali Abdal. And he's a UK-based physician, and he did this video called Why You're Not Happy and What to Do About It. And in the video, he talks all about the happiness equation and a book called Solve for Happy, which is where he learned about it. And it's a great video and a great book. I highly recommend them both, and I will link them both, uh, the book and the video, down below in the description box. But basically, what the happiness equation is getting at is that Oftentimes, we are trying to become more happy by attempting to change our reality. And sometimes we can do that, but a lot of times we can't. The things that are making us unhappy are outside of our control. And so rather than banging our head against the wall, trying to change our reality, if we can change our expectations, we can achieve the same results. And this concept has had such a profound impact on my life personally that I share it with all my clients now, and many of them report back that it has been very helpful for them as well. Okay, so let's think about the happiness equation from the lens of the holiday blues. If we have these big, grandiose expectations of ourselves that we are going to find our loved ones the perfect gift, that we are going to cook the perfect holiday meal, that we're going to keep everyone content and there's going to be no arguments or stress, and we are only going to have these joyous, picturesque, hallmark movie experiences around the holidays, then when our reality does not meet that expectation, we are naturally going to be less happy. But if we try and remove these expectations and think of the holidays as any other time of the year, one, we'll appreciate the time with our loved ones when things go well a lot more. And two, when things don't go quite as planned, we won't be as devastated and we'll have more resilience and Sure, when things go wrong or hard things happen, it's going to hurt in the moment. There is no way around that. But removing our expectations can help us to bounce back a lot quicker and not allow the feelings of disappointment or hurt to last for very long. And if you're getting any value out of this video, it would really help me out if you'd hit the like button down below and also subscribe to my channel and hit that bell notification button so you don't miss my future videos. It would really mean a lot to me as I continue to try and grow my channel. Thanks so much. My third tip for fighting off the holiday blues is to set boundaries. Now, this can look like all sorts of different things in practice. Boundaries with the people in your life, but also boundaries with yourself. This could look like setting a budget for Christmas presents and sticking to it making sure that you're leaving spare time in your daily routine for self-care and to continue your healthy habits. It is very easy during the holidays and as the weather changes, we tend to get cooped up inside, spend less time engaging in exercise or physical movement, and we fall off from healthy eating. 
It's also common for some people to increase tobacco, alcohol, or drug use during the holidays. And while it's certainly okay to let our hair down and enjoy the holidays from time to time, we don't want to completely abandon our healthy habits. Make sure you're leaving enough time for an adequate night's sleep and try to retain some sense of normalcy as possible. This will help us not fall victim to all the increased stress many of us experience during this busy time of year. Boundaries can also look like saying no when you need to. And your friends and family will understand if you can't join in on every single activity or event. Saying yes when we don't truly have the emotional bandwidth can lead us to feeling resentful and exhausted. It's okay to bend your boundaries from time to time when there's an extenuating circumstance if you want to. This is all part of the healthy give and take that happens in the context of human relationships. But doing this all the time can lead to you feeling burnt out and even unhappy or angry. My fourth tip is to practice acceptance. Now, this kind of goes along with removing expectations in some ways, but practicing acceptance is about not ruminating over the facts of a situation and getting stuck in obsessing over how or why it should not be that way. And instead, fully acknowledging our situation and accepting that this is just where we are. That doesn't mean we have to like our circumstances, but there's a difference between healthy self-reflection where we spend time thinking about how a certain situation could be different in hindsight and getting stuck in ruminating over the past. So uh, for example, one good clue that you might not have fully accepted a situation is if you start noticing that you're having a lot of thoughts with the word should. This could look like, I should have been able to afford a better Christmas present for my mom, or I should have a bigger house, or I should be married by now. I should have been strong enough to handle X, Y, Z differently. That person shouldn't have treated me that way. I should be able to manage everything in my life better things like that. If you notice that you are thinking about things this way with these should statements, try and shift your thoughts using language that is more rooted in acceptance. Instead of saying to yourself, I should have X, Y, Z, try saying to yourself, here are the facts of what happened, and here is what I can do or not do, and here is what is within my control, and here is what is not within my control. Now, sometimes this acceptance is for ourselves, but sometimes we also might benefit from practicing acceptance of others for who they are, even when we may disagree with their actions or their viewpoints. I think we all have that one family member that we know just pushes our buttons and gets under underneath our skin. Maybe they're snarky or rude or disrespectful to us or judgmental. Maybe we don't agree with their political views or we just see the world very differently and we dread seeing them at holiday events because we know we might end up clashing. I bet there's a lot of should statements going on in this kind of situation. You know, things like they shouldn't be that way and they should leave me alone. They should be nice to me. They shouldn't think that way. They shouldn't act that way. Those types of thoughts. But at the end of the day, that person is probably not going to change or behave in the way that you want them to or expect them to, right? They've probably been this way for their whole life or for a very long time. And to expect them to behave differently, going back to expectations, is setting ourselves up for failure. And if you're in this situation and you know what I am talking about, I challenge you to really take a moment and ask yourself, why can't you accept that person for who they are? everything they are. Why can't you accept that there are some people who are not going to behave the way you want, or maybe are just not even very good people by your standards? Why can't you accept that there are just some people that behave in the way we want and do not behave in the way we want? Now, I'm not suggesting that you just roll over and allow people to treat you any kind of way or talk to you any type of way or that you should tolerate abuse, for example. Don't get me wrong. But that's where you can spend some time evaluating, one, what is within your control, right? Because we can't control other people or their actions. But also, two, what are your boundaries and how are you going to enforce them? And what are you willing and able to tolerate? And what are you not? But 
by not accepting the person for who they are and exactly what they bring to the table and then being mad or upset about it, it's the equivalent of us sticking our hand in a pot of boiling water and expecting the other person to get burned. It just doesn't work and in the end, we are the ones who end up suffering. And last but not least, my fifth and final tip is to seek professional help if you need it. There's a difference between the holiday blues and symptoms that may be more indicative of a depressive disorder that needs professional treatment. If you're noticing that a majority of the time you're feeling sad, hopeless, worthless, guilty, irritable, or that you're experiencing changes in sleep or appetite, having trouble thinking or concentrating and making decisions, that you have a loss of interest or pleasure in normal activities, any of these on a regular basis are signs that you should seek out the help of a licensed professional. And if you are experiencing any thoughts that you would be better off dead, suicidal thoughts, or engaging in any type of self-harm or self-injurious behavior, then you need to seek out professional help immediately. From anywhere within the United States, you can dial 988 to access the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline, and you'll be connected with a trained counselor instantly who can assist you and help to ensure you stay safe. Thank you so so much for watching this video. I hope you found it helpful and that you're feeling ready to take on this holiday season with more confidence. If you're still watching, leave me a Christmas tree emoji down below in the comments and tell me one thing that you are grateful for this holiday season. For me personally, I'm grateful that I have a support network of great friends and family that always have my back and keep me feeling strong. As always, stay happy, healthy, and informed, and I hope to see you back here very soon. Bye-bye.